All right, next function, um, we're going to graph absolute values. Okay, as you guys know, absolute value is um, a symbol, right, that makes anything you place in positive. All right, so if I inputted negative eight, it would become eight. If I inputted negative four, it would become four. If I put in zero, well, zero doesn't change. It's neither positive nor negative. If I input four, it stays positive. If I input eight, it turns into a positive. And we have something that looks like this. We have eight, eight, four, four, zero, zero. Negative four is also positive four. And negative eight, and we've got this beautiful graph that goes on forever and has a vertex and a line of symmetry much, much, much like the quadratic formula we saw for a different reason. Um, so this graph, absolute value of x, is symmetrical right here, right? Right here across the y-axis. And therefore is an, do you remember? Do you remember when you can flip this? I hope you said it, even function. All right, domain, I go left and right forever. So it is from negative infinity to positive infinity or all real numbers. In the range, it touches zero, notice the bracket here, and goes up to infinity. All right, so there we got it. We graph it the exact same way, exactly like we did a quadratic, except after we're done, it looks a tiny bit different. Look, look. Notice they have an A, B, H, and K. Um, this is one of those rare times where a change in B is actually very similar than a change in A. At least the stretch values, not really the reflection. All right. So this one has no B, and they're going to do that quite often. That is 5, right? So we'll say H equals 5, A equals 4, K equals negative 2. We can list the B as 1. We don't have to. So that's 5, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I don't think I'm in the right. Oh no, it's right in the middle. Watch your scale on this. That's what um, two down, which is right here. And then it says this. It says the very first time I move left or right one, I go up five. So if I move left or right one, which I believe scale of two, that's one, two, four, five, right there and right there, and I've got a graph that looks like that. Not too bad, is it? Now. I'm going to do this one one step at a time, this guy right here. So we're going to say our A is 1. It's what's out here. Our B is negative 2, right? It's been horizontally stretched. All right. Our H is negative 3, and our K is 1. Um, I'm going to, there's other ways to do this, but I want you to see as we go. All right, so we do it in this order. I'm going to list them in order. Negative 2, H negative 3. K equals 1, uh, A also equals 1. I should put the A in front of the K like that. All right. So the normal graph is right here. All right. This B does something. So this B, right, it's a reflection over Y, which does nothing, right? If I reflect this over the Y, it has no effect whatsoever. But it does another thing right it's a horizontal stretch of two so instead of going over one and up one I go over two and up one so my points would be there and it would be horizontally stretched I'm not gonna draw the whole thing but I'm gonna give you a concept of it right then um, should have listed this H here as a negative three over here and then the H says go over three so my vertex go here still horizontally stretched and then my K says go up one so I'm right here but over 2, up 1, over 2, up 1, and I'm just going to check my work to make sure I did this correct. So this should be HK, up 1, over 2. We're good. All right. Um, I'm going to peek on the next one. There could be a couple more. Oh, there is one more, and then we're going to stop. All right, let's look at this guy. Notice, they're, they're giving us either A or B, and there's a reason they do that. All right. Other than reflections, A and B. A vertical stretch with an absolute value is the same as a horizontal shrink, and a vertical compression with an absolute value is the same as a horizontal stretch. So they don't really need both of them. I'm going to use both of them, but they don't really need them. All right, so we've got A equals 
negative one fifth. This is an important one. We'll say b equals one, h equals negative six, k equals four. I am going to go through all the steps again. I'm going to I'm going to do b first. B does nothing, right? So I stay right here. No stretches. I'm not even going to draw a stretch because it doesn't exist right now. H says, hey, you know what you're going to do? You move left six. Well, six is, wow, a scale of four. Six is right here. I don't really like these scales, but there it is, right? And then A says, you know what you're going to do? You're going to flip over the x-axis, and it's a vertical shrink. And a vertical shrink, and here's one of the few functions you can actually do this with. You can treat this almost exactly like a slope of down one and over and it's crazy. It's a scale of like four. Each one's a scale of four. So I'm gonna guess at it. Down one would be one fourth of that and over five would be a little bit more than one. Right? So it's gonna really stretch out. But let's go ahead and get our K factor first. K factor goes just like that. And we're gonna go ahead and draw this to the best of our ability like that. And there it is. Right, I'm going to pause this. We're going to go backwards on the next one, but that's the first video.